When creating a model in Comsol Multiphysics, you will need to define materials and physics boundary conditions, and selections can make this process much easier. With LiveLink for SolidWorks, the Comsol Selections functionality keeps track of the different geometric entities at the source, that is, on the SolidWorks design, assuring that applied boundary conditions will remain attached to the geometry even when the design is changed in SolidWorks. We will go over selections automatically generated from material assignments and explicit selections of assembly components, features, objects, and faces. If you are unfamiliar with LiveLink for SOLIDWORKS, you can learn about the basics of synchronization in a previous video. Here in SOLIDWORKS, we have an IC assembly file open. In this model, we may be interested in studying the heat transfer in the assembly due to dual heating. To do this, we need to assign material properties to the different components. Here in SOLIDWORKS, we have already assigned materials to our components. For the base plate, we have FR4. For the IC body, we have plastic. For the leads, we have assigned copper, and so on. And some of these are solid objects. We also have surface objects, for instance, the copper traces and the copper ground plate. Since we have already assigned these material selections in SOLIDWORKS, we don't need to duplicate this work in Comsol Multiphysics. Looking at the Comsol Selections window, there's an option to auto-generate selections for materials. This way, when we synchronize in Comsol Multiphysics, the material selections will be transferred over as well. Let's add a blank model in Comsol Multiphysics, and then add a 3D space component and a live link for SOLIDWORKS node. When we synchronize, the geometry is added, as we would expect, and so are the material selections from the CAD package, SOLIDWORKS. This makes adding material properties much easier in Comsol Multiphysics. All we have to do is add the material, in this case, let's go with copper, and then we need to select the geometric entity level, we'll go with domain, and from the selection list, we can add copper. You can see it's been added to the appropriate domains. Similarly, we can add copper again, and this time we'll select boundary as the geometric entity level, and from the selection menu, we'll choose copper.surface. And again, the appropriate boundaries have been added. Additionally, let's say we were to change the geometry in SOLIDWORKS. As mentioned before, if we change, let's say, the number of pins from 8 to 14 and click OK, the geometry updates in SOLIDWORKS. And then when we resynchronize in Comsol Multiphysics, the geometry will update in Comsol Multiphysics, as will the material properties. So again, you really just need to define these once and then any geometric changes will be transferred across the two programs. As mentioned before, this is a heat transfer and electromagnetics problem. The power transistor generates heat. And in the simulation, we would like to, let's say, replace this power transistor geometry simply with a boundary. Uh, so let's take a look at how we would do this. First, we need to transfer the actual power transistor geometry over into Comsol Multiphysics. What we can do in SOLIDWORKS is right-click on the power transistor component and add this to a COMSOL selection. Then we can rename it so it's a little easier to read and click the check mark. Then again, when we resynchronize in SOLIDWORKS, notice down here in the selections, the power transistor was added. And for the next step, we can actually combine SOLIDWORKS selections with COMSOL Multiphysics selections. First, we can add an adjacent selection. And for the input selection, we want to add the power transistor. And then this will create output entities of the exterior boundaries, from which only the one touching the board will remain after we delete the transistor itself in the next steps. So we can rename this heat source. Then we need to create a union of all the objects 
So we can select all of them and build selected. And this creates the imprint on the ground plate. And then we can actually delete the domain selection of the power transistor. Now when we build all the objects, you can see the imprint of the power transistor on the ground plate. Then we can go and apply our physics boundary condition. First we add heat transfer and solids. And then we can add our boundary condition for boundary heat source. And from the selection menu, select heat source. Now we've successfully replaced the power transistor domain with a boundary. At this point, let's go to SOLIDWORKS and switch from our IC assembly to our ship hull SOLIDWORKS part. For this model, we would be interested in corrosion protection on the hull of the ship. Let's add a few of these features to our selections. First, we can add entire features, such as this propeller, to our COMSOL selections. And additionally, we can create new selections manually and select them from the design tree. Here we can select the anodes that are used for the corrosion protection, which are output objects of this split line feature and this L pattern feature. So we can actually add multiple entities to the same selection. And then we can click the check mark to confirm this and go back into COMSOL Multiphysics to add our boundary conditions. Let's start with a new model, and this time we can use the model wizard to add a 3D space dimension, and then add a secondary current distribution node, and click Done. Then we need to add our Live Link for SOLIDWORKS node, and click Synchronize. As usual, we have the geometry, and we also have the selections that were created just a moment ago. Similarly to the last example, we can go to the physics nodes, add our boundary conditions. In this case, we would want to add electrolyte potential and select anodes from this drop-down menu. And again, if we were to go into our SOLIDWORKS model again and change the value of the anodes, from two to, let's say we want four anodes. Again, this changes in SOLIDWORKS. And then when we resynchronize in COMSOL Multiphysics, the extra anodes show up. And the boundary selection is updated as well. Finally, I'd like to point out that with the COMSOL selections, there's an option to save your selections in the SOLIDWORKS file. And this is checked automatically so that when you open up or create any new COMSOL Multiphysics models, the selections will still remain in SOLIDWORKS. So it's recommended to always leave this checked. You should now be able to connect materials and explicit selections between SOLIDWORKS and COMSOL Multiphysics, as well as how to save them to maintain your work. In addition to the demoed explicit selections shown in this video, selections of objects, faces, edges, and vertices can also be made.